Hi again, it's Kristen with the Calipuya Watershed Council, and I'm here today to introduce your salmon biology lesson. We're starting with this lesson because it is a good way to introduce why healthy rivers are so important, and why salmon are so important. So the lesson is to be done entirely indoors and requires only the materials in your salmon biology uh, curriculum and the links that you will find at our website, calipuya.org slash watershed discovery kits. This lesson is broken down into three parts. We have salmon biology, salmon in Oregon tribes, and challenges to salmon survival. You don't have to do all of these in one sitting. You can come back and finish up as time allows, but you will want to finish all of these exercises before you move on to your next lesson. Before we really get started, I'm gonna ask you to pull out what we call your KWL sheet. So that's what you know, what you want to know, and what you learned about salmon. And just take a few minutes and fill out the first column, what I know about salmon. So anything you already know, maybe you know lots, and you'll fill in that whole column. Maybe you only know that salmon are fish and you don't really know much more than that about them. So fill that out, and then take some time to think about what you want to learn about salmon. So over this whole virtual field trip, you're going to be learning a lot about salmon, hearing a lot of new things, and what is it that you are interested in learning. So go ahead and pause the video and fill out those two columns, and then when you come on back, we will get started. Hello, welcome back. I hope that you're ready to start learning about salmon. And we're gonna start with the basics. There are five species of Pacific salmon, and I have a very handy way to help you remember each of those five species. To remember the five species of Pacific salmon, we're gonna use our hand. First is the chum, which is our thumb. Next is sockeye, because we can point to our eye with the pointer finger. The largest king or Chinook salmon is our longest, largest middle finger. Silver or coho for our ring finger. And pink for our pinky. So all five of these salmon have quite a bit in common. One thing that they have in common is all five are keystone species, which means they're very important to their environment, which is something you're going to see as you go through the rest of the lessons in your kit. And these keystone species, if they are removed from an environment because they're so vital, that whole environment, the whole ecosystem will change and could collapse. Can you think of other keystone species? Pause the video if you need a few minutes to think about what other species might be so, so important to their environments. Welcome back. Were you able to think of other keystone species? Some that come to mind for me are sea otters, wolves, sharks, and there's many, many more. Okay. All of these salmon are also indicator species, which means if they are in a stream or a river, then we know that that area is healthy, especially if we see juvenile salmonids or salmon in a river or a stream, we know that that is a healthy stream, otherwise those salmon wouldn't be able to survive there, wouldn't be staying there. So now, let's get into our activities. We're gonna start with the salmon life cycle. And one of the most important things to remember is that salmon are anadromous, which means they're born in fresh water, they migrate to the ocean, and then back to fresh water again to spawn. So right now I'm gonna ask you to take out a piece of paper. You can use the back of your KWL sheet if you need to, and just draw a picture of the salmon their route from the upper watershed down through the rivers, out into the ocean, and then back again. And hang on to that, because we're gonna be doing some more with that. So go ahead and pause the video and get that drawing started, and then we will continue on. Welcome back. One thing I think we've all discovered at this point is that the salmon life cycle is pretty cool. So let's take out our migration maps and take a look at those before we move on to our next session. Here is my sample drawing of that migration. Salmon come from the headwaters up here, down through maybe some farmland or a city, out into the ocean, 
They're gonna spend a few years out there getting fat and healthy, and then they'll come back through the larger rivers and down into those smaller creeks and streams of the headwaters. So over the course of their anadromous life, salmon go through six different life stages. Let's take a closer look at those. Here we see the life cycle of Pacific salmon. They start off as eggs in the red where they were laid. As alevin, they stay in the safety of that red until their yolk sac is gone. When they swim up out of the red and into the stream, we call them fry. And sometimes you'll hear people talk about par, which is another word that we use for fry when they start developing these, these bars or par marks on their body. But for our purposes, we're just gonna consider them fry for that entire life stage. Eventually, the instincts of that fry will lead it to head downstream towards the ocean and its body will start going through a lot of different changes as it prepares for life in salt water. At that stage, we call the salmon a smolt. Once the smolt enters the ocean, it becomes a big, strong adult. As that adult grows older and stronger, its instincts will eventually lead it to head back to the stream where it was born to spawn and then die. After a salmon dies, its carcass actually becomes a very important part of the ecosystem as well. And you'll learn more about that in your riparian lesson. Now that you know a little bit more about each of those life stages, I'm gonna direct you to the Kalapuya Watershed Council webpage so that you can pull up the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife Salmon Life Cycle presentation and read over that presentation. And while you're doing that, pull back out your migration map and indicate where a fish would be for each stage of its life. And then while you're at it, add in one challenge that you think a salmon might face during their lifetime somewhere on that migration map that you created. So go ahead and do that and then come on back and we'll do some more. So here is my drawing again with some life stages added on there. You'll see eggs and alevin, they are staying right there in the red where they were laid. And then fry are venturing away from the red but it's still not too far downstream. As they start to venture downstream, they're gonna become smolt down in those larger rivers and out into the estuary where the river meets the ocean. Then they will reach adulthood and be adults in the ocean. And our migrating adult will come back and through that whole river system again. And you can see my challenge here is there is a stretch of this river where there is no shade and that water might get a little bit too warm for our salmon. So, how do you think these returning salmon find those what we call natal streams, or those streams where they were born? How do you think they find those? It's been kind of a mystery for a while, but scientists now believe that those salmon can use the Earth's magnetic field to figure out where they are on the Earth and how to get where they're going. And once they get close to their natal streams, they can actually use their sense of smell to, to guide them the rest of the way. Now that we've talked about how salmon find those natal streams, why don't you go back to the website and find out what all the fuss is about and watch the Idaho Fish and Game salmon spawning video. And at this point, I'm gonna ask you to pull out your KWL chart again. If you have learned anything in this salmon life cycle section, go ahead and add that in and we will move on to salmon and the tribes next. Salmon are an important part of the cultures of the Pacific Northwest and have been since long before Europeans ever arrived here. The original inhabitants of the area that we now call Oregon have long recognized the importance of salmon since time immemorial, which means longer than anybody can remember. 
And one reason that salmon are so important is because they are what we call a first food. They are a food that the people of this land have been eating that has been sustaining them since time immemorial. And the annual return of salmon to this area of the world has always been celebrated. To get a better understanding of the importance of these returning salmon ceremonies, go back to the website and watch the video of the first salmon ceremony of the Tekelma tribe, the original inhabitants of the Middle Rogue Valley. That's a pretty incredible story. I want you to think about a place that's really special to you, a really important place. Think about it, get it in your head, and then think about how it would feel if somebody took that place from you and you were no longer allowed to go there. Then think about how you would feel if years and years and years later, you were able to rediscover that location and everything about it that was so special to you. Despite having their land taken from them and all the many, many hardships that followed, indigenous people all over Oregon are carrying on their traditions and their life ways, just like the people of the Tekelma tribe. Think about that for a little bit, and then I'm gonna direct you back to the website. Follow the link to the Columbia River Intertribal Fish Commission. They have a, a website for children that explains why salmon are so important to tribes. So take a few moments to read that over and then pull out your handy sheet again. And at this point, I want you to fill out what you have learned about salmon and the tribes of Oregon. Welcome back again. At this point in the lesson, we're gonna discuss some of the challenges that salmon face during their life. And salmon face challenges at every stage of their life. Some challenges that they've been facing for millions of years, and some that are more recent. So take a minute to think about what some of those challenges to salmon survival might be, and then follow the link on our website to play the Salmon Challenge game from the, um, from the National Museum of the American Indian. And then come on back. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed your salmon survival game. Did your salmon survive? If so, what were some of the challenges that the salmon had to overcome in order to survive? I bet you saw some warm water, some predators, maybe some overfishing or some dams. These are real world challenges that salmon have to face in order to survive and spawn. And you can play that several times if you wanna make different choices and see how other challenges might be met by the salmon. But the main takeaway is that it's really hard to be a salmon. And I hope what you've taken away from the rest of this lesson is that salmon are really important. They're important to the people of Oregon. They're important to so many other animals in the Pacific Northwest. They're a huge part of the economy of the Pacific Northwest and of Oregon. And despite how important these creatures are, they're still in danger all over their range. And there are things we can do to help salmon and some of your other lessons will help you understand ways that we can help salmon populations and continue to survive here in Oregon. So now that we've completed this lesson, go back to your KWL chart and fill out everything that you've learned. Hopefully you are filling up the entire page unless you already knew everything about salmon. So take a few minutes to finish that up and think about what you've learned about salmon today, and we will see you next time.